All right, hey guys. Uh, today we are building a rat trap, or I shouldn't say that. Uh, it's actually a feed dispenser uh, for rat poison. Uh, this is to be used outdoors only. Um, I don't recommend using, well, this is for commercial use. It's gonna be for a, um, a business that I'm working for that uh, needs basically rat control. So I gone around on a full perimeter of the place and found out that they're coming from the outside inside. So we sealed up the store, but because there's such a huge rat population, I've decided that I think we should probably do a full IPM, which is Integrated Pest Management Program, and uh, basically put them on that. So we're going to be uh, keeping this thing topped off with rat poison for, I would say, about a month and a half, and maybe keep going as long as the rat poison keeps getting taken. And the reason we're going to build this, um, this dispenser that I've got here is because a, this is much larger than the dispensers that I can get at the store, which are very flimsy. Uh, the wind just blows them away, uh, let alone this thing, which is a lot more sturdy. And for the price that I made, can make this for, basically, the um, for the same price that I'm making this is uh, uh, by far a better feeder and uh, more sturdy than one that I could pay maybe about two dollars more for and it's only this big compared to a full unit so um, I think it's a this is probably the better route to go and you can lock it up easily by uh, we'll go into that when we make it but you can also tie down the the unit itself by the handle so animals or people makes it harder for them to drag it off so uh, basically the tools you're going to need for this, um, the most important thing is going to be a drill, a uh, two inch hole saw, and um, also just a small drill bit to drill holes big enough for zap straps. So you're going to need zap straps as well, at least four of them. Uh, you could probably get away with three, um, but I recommend uh, four, just because you want to zap strap this lid on so animals can't get into us. Because when you're doing poison you are you are responsible and you do not want to kill non-target animals or have an accidental poisoning. Um, if you end up doing that, it's huge fines. So that's why you build this proper dispensary. You're also going to need an X-Acto knife because I'm going to build a feeding tray to put inside this. And the feeding tray is going to be shoe gooed in there so it doesn't go anywhere. So we're just going into a little bit extra just to make this um, this unit work a bit better and you don't want the poison to be spilt uh, and then birds or whatnot can get to it easily. You just want a one hole that makes it sort of intimidating for most animals to go into but rats and mice they love going into burrows so they will go into that and you want it sort of big enough or small enough to, to keep the um, the problem animals uh, or sorry the, the non-target animals out. Um, in fact a two inch might even be a slightly a little bit too big of a hole, um, but I'm going to go with that and I'm going to be facing it inside underneath the building, so it's very unlikely small birds will go in there. So we're going to get started. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is cut my feeding tray down. Uh, if I have a smaller tray it's better, but I don't, so I'm just going to take this yogurt container and cut it to just a little bit half of its, its size only for making it easier for the rat to access your pellets. It doesn't have to be beautiful or anything like that, it just has to work. And I got that a little high, so we'll just try and cut this again. There. That's good enough. That's all it's got to be. And we're going to just take this. Now's the time to drill our hole for the entrance. And you want that really close to the bottom of the, the bucket so the rats can get in easily. And so can mice.
hard to cut. I'm gonna change batteries. Try this again. Oh, that battery's totally toast. Um, I might have to charge these out. Yeah. So. Okay. You know what? I'm gonna do it the other way. Forget the whole saw. We're just gonna cut this out because it's been a bitch. And I can just follow my hole that the uh, the hole saw was trying to trace out. Uh, this polyethylene is actually a lot softer than I thought it was. And without having any battery juice, that drill's just not gonna work. So I'm just gonna sit here and I'm just gonna cut this out. So bear with me. we go we've got our entrance hole cut out so that was there and we cut it out so next thing we're gonna take our bait tray and we shall put a bunch of shoe goo on the bottom of this and opposite to your hole you want to put in your tray there and this will keep it dry as well, uh, your bait, because what happens is when this is here, water possibly could end up going in here and accumulate in here along with rat piss and whatnot, and it just keeps your bait clean. That's the basic principle of it. And you want it far away so the rat comes in, has to feed, and non-target animals are less likely to come in and actually feed. Um, that's basically the whole principle of it. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to build our top end to mount your zap straps on. So you'll probably want a bit that's big enough for your zap straps. A little teeny bit bigger so it just makes it easier. And this is easy. You just do a hole there. Go kitty right across, pull there, pull there, and a pull there. And the reason that I recommend four is that you don't get the animal getting in and flipping up a side. If you do two, they could get in on either side, like a dog, uh, possibly a coon, raccoon, uh, any other non-target animal. If you're trying to poison uh, the bright animal, then build it right. But um, this is for rats, and we don't want to poison anything else. So there you go, I just drilled along the sides now. So what's going to happen is after you put your bait into the tray, you're just going to take some zap straps, and you'll just run it through each hole, and zap strapper shut around your, your holes to zap strap your lid on. And then when you want to rebate, you'll just take wire cutters, just or side cutters, and you just cut those zap straps, lift up your lid, pour more bait in, and zap strap them up again. And the reason the zap straps go on is it ensures that you've done everything to your ability to stop non-target animals from getting in there. So that's your basic uh, rat, rat, um, rat poison dispensary. I recommend it for small farms, big farms, um, and of course the more uh, the larger the place is that uh, is infested, maybe the more of these you're going to need. Um, this will be probably big enough for one dwelling to a small corner store. So uh, there you go, just your basic um, uh, integrated pest management program uh, bait station. Hope that helps some of you guys that have pest problems and don't really know about how to go about um, getting rid of them. And I'll just say this one last time because it can't be stressed more. Um, when you're applying poison, always use it outdoors. Do not use it indoors. Um, what happens when animal the rat picks up the pellets and they come along and they come to a food source is the food source is more likable than their pellets. They will dump all ingredients in their mouth, usually the pellets, and leave it in the food where they gather up the food they want. So you can end up actually poisoning yourself or having other complications, uh, poisoning your pet because of it getting in pet food, whatnot. So always keep everything in containers, but also 
um, make sure your your baits are well well um, controlled. Um, always use it outdoors. It just reduces your chance of of a cross contamination. Um, you can use the snap traps indoors. That's usually what I do. I don't like using snap traps outdoors because I well I've only caught two and I stopped doing it. And one time I caught a bird. One time I caught a uh, basically a small Douglas squirrel. And it's never fun to kill something that you're not intending to kill, at least not for ethical people and normally sane people. <laughs> so it wasn't on it wasn't a very proud day, so um much rather um uh, do these things properly. So there you go, for about um two fifty nine for the lid and it was four dollars, so five six about seven dollars I've got a way better bait station than what an $8 bait station would get me if I bought it. And um, there you go.